Des Moines Register. You can see that on the camera. And they're saying, um, Iowa's ethanol producers will ask the legislature this session to shift the half cent per gallon state income tax credit from the 10% ethanol blend, now most commonly so, to the 15% that the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency approved last week for use in autos of the 2001 model year and later, which increased the number of cars on the road who are eligible to use ethanol um, to 65% of cars on the road. It used to be cars that were 2007 later, and now it's cars 2001 forward. Monty Shaw, Executive Director of the Iowa Renewable Fuels Association, told the group's annual summit meeting in Des Moines on Tuesday that most gasoline retailers have just two tanks, one filled with unblended, unleaded gasoline, and the other with E10. We want them to shift that second tank to E15. Governor Terry Branstad appeared at that meeting and told about 700 attendees, quote, I want to work with the legislature to change the, the credit from 10% to 15%, unquote. Retailers must first await the, the new EPA-approved label for their pumps, not expected until April. They have to reaffirm their insurance status with the different fuel blends and then reconfigure their tanks and pumps to accommodate the new blend as well as unblended gasoline and premium gasoline, not to mention, mention diesel in rural areas. And so there's some logistical concerns um, that have to be addressed, but there does seem to be support um, from the governor on the issue. But still, a lot of practical things that have to be worked out as we'll see with this next article. This is coming from, uh, let's see, ethanol, can you see that? Okay. Quick trip passes on E15 for now. This is a printout I made from DesMoinsRegister.com. This is a Thursday, January 27th. And let's see what they say on that. Basically, Quick Trip convenience store chain, which has fixed 560 stores in nine states and 22 stores in the greater Des Moines area is in no rush to install equipment to dispense E15 ethanol. Quote, we have some real concerns about misfueling, unquote, said Quick Trip spokesman Mark Thornburg. There are also legal issues and other problems. For now, we're comfortable dispensing E10, which we do at all of our stores. Chief Financial Officer William Wall Jasper of Casey's General Stores at the Ankeny-based chain is open-minded about using E15, but is awaiting further details. Come and go, an aggressive marketer of ethanol among Iowa convenience stores also says it will have to work out details. And it seems like there's legal liability issues that they want to make sure that they're um, totally cognizant on, which I respect. You do want to have uh, a thorough understanding of information before you um, charge forward. So we'll see what they say on that. Um, this is another article. Um, this is coming from the Des Moines Register.com. Marketers chain cast doubt on E15. It's undated. I accessed it Thursday, January 28th. And... They're saying um, something similar. Um, the petroleum, the Iowa Petroleum Marketers and Convenience Store Organization said Thursday that E15 was a, quote, political move and said that the need for a special blend of gasoline could raise the price of E15 by as much as five cents per gallon. And then also the fine for misfueling is 2500 for the motorist and 25000 for the retailer. And I think that's why a lot of the chains are taking a, a wait and see how the details work out approach. Uh, widespread acceptance of E15 is believed to be up to two years away because of the legal and technical challenges and that most retailers will have to reconfigure their tank and dispenser systems. And so that's the status of the E15 today. Um, also, I wanted to show the other side of that issue um, by another uh, interested party. We've heard from the um, actual um, pro-ethanol, pro-biodiesel organizations. We've heard from the um, 
chain retail stores that would sell the the supposedly sell the the petrol or the the ethanol. Here is something that comes from the Natural Heritage Foundation. Um, they were also at the Renewable Fuel Summit. It's undated, but the chart right here that you see is dated 2010. And so they're showing um, on the map, and let me bring it over here so I can see it. Each dot on that map represents a proposed major biomass energy facility. And I'll go ahead and show that on there again. And so they asked a series of questions. Um, if you can see those. Based on your own values and beliefs, what entity or entities do you think should pay for the conservation plans needed to prevent additional damage to soil and water resources? The industries buying the biomass, the producers selling the biomass, state government because it, re it recruited the industries, the producers and the industry share the responsibility, all of the above, none of the above, your alternative. And at the very bottom, I'll read that. They say, please staple your business card to your response if you want a follow-up discussion. So that was <laughs> kind of interesting um, take on things. But um, it's just a reminder that there are environmental aspects that some people have um, concerns about. Okay, so off energy um, and biodiesel on to public transportation. This is um, from the Des Moines Register. It's from the Tuesday, January 25th, Des Moines Register ongoing rail subsidy question. Governor Terry Branstad said Monday he's troubled by the prospect of ongoing taxpayer subsidies for proposed Iowa City to Chicago passenger train and wants to see if alternative funding is available. He suggested that the railroad could be asked to help contribute towards the cost. He also said he wants to talk with Chamber of Commerce officials and community leaders. The governor, who will issue his state, of, his state budget recommendations on Thursday, said he still hasn't made a final decision about the proposed Iowa City to Chicago train. And what stands out for me in this article is the fact that he has not said no. It's still on the table. There's still some issues to discuss. Um, right now, he's um, in an interesting bargaining position. He knows it. And I think um, those involved with the project know it, too. Hopefully, they can work something out the right way to where it does benefit the, the economic wherewithal and the tourism and the um, individual citizens of uh, the state of Iowa. Um, this is another article um, a little bit later in the week. I'll put it on the camera. Um, Iowa's Department of Transportation says Iowa City Train could still find state backing. And this article comes from KCRG TV uh, in Cedar Rapids. They say Governor Terry Branstad says the state won't subsidize operation of a new Chicago to Iowa City passenger rail service. But that may depend on how you define, define subsidy. <laughs> um, Iowa and Illinois would share operating costs not covered by passenger fares. Iowa's annual share is estimated at $3 million. Although Branstad has said he doesn't want the state getting into the operating subsidy business for the twice daily trains that would begin running in 2015, he hasn't withdrawn $11.5 million in state money. Through, January, through July 2013 for planning and early capital improvements needed before the trains can roll. Most of the startup costs are covered by the $230 million Federal Railroad Administration grant. Um, some of Amtrak, um, California's costs, and this is going on to discuss how others have funded their passenger rail. Some of Amtrak California's costs are covered through the state gas tax and Washington State uh, taps, and this is in Washington State, they tap vehicle license fees, both under, under the justification that the rail option actually reduces wear on highways. The study supporting Iowa's federal grant application estimated the trains would reduce highway travel by 25,000 um, vehicle miles per year.